What's the biggest mistake I've made in regard to my social media strategy? That's what I'm going to talk to you about today, because if I'd known this five years ago, it would have made a huge difference in where my business uh, is now. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you about today is don't make this mistake that I did when I was starting out. And especially now in light of what's going on with Facebook and the privacy issues, um, it's even more important that you kind of hear this now than ever. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. As always, if you like my content and you'd like to see me keep producing more, uh, if you can give me a th thumbs up, that would be helpful. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and you can click the little bell button to get notified of future videos that would really help me out and help grow the channel and help share the message with other people who share the same dream that we have. So I'm pretty successful in social media. I think by any standard, um, I've done fairly well, especially when you consider I'm an old guy. I didn't grow up with this stuff. I only learned how to actually work a smartphone back in, I think it was 2016, 2015. I never owned my own smartphone up until then. And I actually thought social media was just about giggling babies and cat videos. And I really didn't think it had any application in terms of helping me grow my business and helping my career. Um, now, obviously, I have very, very different uh, take on that. I mean, I have now, what do I have? I have uh, 30,000 followers on Facebook. I think I'm around 14,000 followers on Instagram. I've got over 20,000 followers on TikTok. We've got over 6,000 subscribers to this channel. Um, I can't remember how many I have on LinkedIn, but I think I have somewhere around 100,000 followers on social media total. And so that's been great. And I've, I've been very, very effective at, at learning how to use social media. And one of the very first things um, that I got out of it when I started applying like a real concise strategy was the whole idea is that you give value to people uh, and you give, 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 and then occasionally ask. And so that's how I conducted my whole social media strategy. And all I was really concerned about at the beginning was like the reach that my posts would get, the followers that I would would get, because I thought, well, then I can actually reach these people. So every once in a while, if I had a show coming up, uh, or especially once I started doing online sales, you know, then I would do a post uh, about that. But the problem that I never really realized at the time is that just because someone follows you, doesn't mean you have access to them, right? Initially, I used to get organic reach of 10, 15, 20,000 uh, views on just a reasonably good Facebook post. Well, now I'm lucky to get 1,000 or 1,200 or 1,500 views if, unless I'm willing to pay Mark Zuckerberg to boost the post. And that's the whole issue with social media is that you don't have access to those people just because they follow you. Um, you only have access to people once you get them on your email list. And that was the one thing that I sorely neglected early on in my social media career, which is at the time when I had the biggest reach for free that you could get. Um, and so I would often just, I would just do posts, uh, and, and give whatever information I was giving, uh, and that was it. And I never asked people to do anything. And, and that was in line kind of with the whole social media thing too, is like, don't always be asking for people. But when we talk about asking, we're typically talking about, you know, buy my product or take my course or, or do whatever. We can also ask people to do something that really doesn't cost them anything and that probably they'll be happy to do if they enjoy your content and they follow you and they want to be advised of everything that that's going on. And that's to ask them to sign up for your newsletter or to be put on your email list. And for the first five years that I did social media, I had huge, um, huge reach, reached all kinds of people. But now when I go to do a post, I only reach, I think the, I think it's four point something percent of your followers is the, is that's all 
that your posts will go out to unless you pay to boost it. And so what I've started doing now is every single post that I put out on on Facebook um, where, where it's where it's regarding about my art to people who might be interested in purchasing my art. I just have a little thing at the bottom of each post that at the end of the comments that says, and if you'd like to learn more about my art or upcoming shows or sales, please consider um, signing up to my email list. And I give them a link where they can go to do that. I also have that on, on my website, but it's a very, very tiny thing to ask, but it's a huge thing down the road because right now, actually, most of our earnings that are coming in now are online sales, but it's through a weekly feature that I'm doing with my newsletter list. Uh, and that that list is it's fairly large and it's actually growing because we're actually working consciously um, to get people who might be potential clients on that list. But if I had consciously just put that little rider at the end of every post, just asking people if you join my work and you'd like to be advised of future shows or sales, you know, please join my, my newsletter list. I'm sure my list would be 10 times as big as it is now. And I have no way of reaching all those people who were engaging with my posts uh, back when I got huge reach, unless I want to pay a lot of money through Facebook advertising. So that's the one mistake that I made early on was not asking people to sign up for my newsletter. Again, it costs them nothing. And if they don't like it, they, they can unsubscribe anytime they want. But what it does is it allows you now to have control over reaching those people. Um, I have no control when I put a post out on Facebook of who it's going to go to. And, and again, unless I'm willing to spend money, it's only going to go out to a small fraction of people who already follow me. So what's the biggest mistake I've made in my social media strategy? It's not getting people's name and email so that I can reach out to them later. And again, you don't want to be bugging them or whatever, but there are people who legitimately would like to know about about any shows you have coming up, about sales you have coming up, about uh, any sort of special promotions that you have. And it hurts nothing to ask. Uh, and, and again, even if they sign up, if they decide they don't want to be, they can unsubscribe. But that allows you control over reaching your audience. So if you are doing social media, at the very least on every post, I would say, at the bottom, you don't want to be right up front with it, but at the bottom of the comments, um, just put it out there that if you'd like to receive information about shows I have coming up or, f or feature offers or whatever, here's, here's how you can go on my list. And so the reason I thought this was a really good time to actually kind of talk about this is, well, first of all, I think it's just a good practice to get into. Uh, but right now, you may not be aware, there's major changes going on with Facebook and privacy. Um, in particular, Apple's new iOS no longer allows Facebook to track all of your movements. Uh, and you may not be aware that this was going on, but Facebook could tell you every single post you've ever seen, how long you've looked at that post, whether you liked it, whether you commented on it, whether you shared it. And what that did is that gave Facebook a very, very detailed picture of who you were and what you were interested in and what you were likely to do, because it also recorded if you made purchases online or not. So a lot of people were really uncomfortable with the fact that Facebook knew so much about them. For myself as an advertiser, um, in particular for my online courses, that was very valuable to me because it would it would target my ads to people who were likely to be very, very interested in my products, so my online courses, and also it would target people who have a past history of actually purchasing online, of learning online, all of that kind of stuff. Well, now that Facebook's no longer able to do all that, now you can't even reach that audience um, like you could before, even if you're willing to pay for it, because Facebook no longer has all of that data. And so that's why it's even more important than ever to capture people's information and get them on your email list. 
And that then gives you the ability to reach out to these people whenever you have information that you'd like them to have. It doesn't cost you anything. And they also have the ability to unsubscribe. So it's not like a huge onerous um, commitment you're asking people to do. But what it makes sure is that anybody and everybody who's ever interacted with any of your social media content and might be interested in something that you have to offer down the road, you now have their information, you have the ability to reach out to them and to get a hold of them. If you don't gain that, even if you have a very successful ongoing uh, marketing strategy with social media, the fact that the platforms can just change in an instant how those algorithms work, how many people you reach, it means that you are very vulnerable. Whereas when you have the people's name and their email, you control the information. No individual platform is going to really cause a huge downturn in your business because they've changed the algorithm or they've reduced the percentage of people that you get to see. So biggest mistake I've made in my social media uh, strategy uh, is not from the very outset, just giving people the opportunity to sign up to my newsletter if they were interested in future shows, deals, offers, promotions, sales, whatever you have going on. So I would encourage you to put something like that at the end of every post.